Good morning. I hope you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh, I just wanted to hop on for a moment and uh, look at the two problems that you worked on on Friday. These were the two uh, problems from your notebook. Um, and I'm going to go through both of them uh, just to make sure we clear up any confusions. Uh, but of course, even, you know, after this, if you need to, uh, give me a message and let me know and I'll try to help you out. Uh, okay, so I've got the first one up on the board already, so we're going to tackle that one. <clears throat> we have carbon and hydrogen and chlorine. All right, and the initial count on this side is one carbon, four hydrogen, and two chlorine. Okay, that's the initial count. Do a little separation between reactant and product sites, and do the second count for the product side. Uh, carbon, we have one. Chlorine, we have four plus one more. Remember, when they got the plus in between them, you have to add them together. So four plus one more, there's five. And hydrogen, oh, I did it again. I did it on the last one. All right, we have five, the chlorine is on the bottom. Uh, and then hydrogen, we have one. Okay, so we know we're out of balance. Uh, we're not gonna worry about carbon at the moment, uh, but I'm gonna start with tackling hydrogen. So if I have four over here, is there a way I can get four hydrogens right away? Yes, there is. If I put a four here, then that will change the hard hydrogen to four of them. But it also, remember, is distributive. So uh, I'm going to have four chlorine as well to add to the four that are sitting here. So that would give me a total of eight chlorines on the product side. Okay, so I've, I've managed to work out the hydrogens for now, uh, but I need to work on chlorine, and my carbon is still okay right now. So let's work on chlorine. Uh, is there any way that I can go from uh, two chlorines here to match eight of them on the other side? And if I look at my chlorine, the chlorine is up here. How can I make Cl2 turn into eight chlorines? Well, I can put a four and four Cl2s, two plus two plus two plus two, eight. So you can see here, one, one, four, four, eight, eight. I've got a balanced equation. So my answer, one, four to one to four. And that would be my balanced equation coefficient ratio. Is it uh, a final answer because it is in lowest ratio? Well, I can't divide them all by the same thing any further, so yes, it is a final answer. Okay, let me go to the second one. Okay, uh, let's see. Remember, I'm putting a little bit of distance there so I have some room to mess with the coefficients. Oh. And hydrochloric acid. Okay, so there's my equation. I'm going to do my initial count. I have hydrogen. Sulfur, oxygen, sodium, and chlorine. I want to make sure you could still see that. Okay. All right, so my initial count is going to be two hydrogen, one sulfur, uh, oxygen's four. Okay. None of these are over here, so I didn't need to worry about adding. So now I go to sodium 
and I go to chlorine. Okay, so that's my initial reactant count. All right, and now let's do the product count. So uh, sodium, I have two. Oh, sodium. Sodium down here. I have two. Sulfur, I have one. Oxygen, I have four. Uh, hydrogen, I have one. And chlorine, I have one. Okay, so I can see right away that hydrogen is out of balance. Can I make two hydrogens over here? And the answer is yes. My HCl is a perfect one to just put a two in front of, and that's going to distribute to give me two H's, but it also doubles my chlorine, so my bottom number down here is gonna double, okay? Um, so that fixes hydrogen. Uh, let's tackle, see, sulfur is fine, oxygen is fine, uh, and A. I need a couple of sodium over here because the product ends up with two, so when I look at the Na here, I see that I can very easily put a two, and that will distribute to give me two sodiums and two chlorines. Okay, check it again. I've got two and two, one and one, four and four, two and two, and two and two. All right, so that one is balanced. Let's see if it's in the lowest ratio. I have one to two, to one, to two. And yes, can't divide all of them by the same number to go any lower, so we're good to go. All right, so those were the two answers and how you should have worked them out. Um, remember this, put this back up like I did uh, last time. Things to remember, tally atoms on both sides first, use your coefficients to change the amount of atoms, that is, use the coefficients. Don't ever change subscripts. If you change a subscript, you change the identity. Let me give you a quick example. Um, we all know the famous H2O, right? That has a ratio of a two to one. Two hydrogens for every one oxygen is equals water okay can't see that equals water but look what happens if I change a subscript let's keep the H2 okay but we're going to put the O with a 2 instead of a 1 H2O2 okay <clears throat> that is not something you want to have as an ice beverage on a hot day you could end up in the hospital. That's called hydrogen peroxide, okay? So changing a subscript is not gonna work. If you need two oxygens from a water molecule, you're gonna have to double the water molecule to make that happen, okay? So just wanted to reiterate that. Only change coefficient numbers. Um, go back to the list here again. And mm, I get it, yeah. Change the tally as you go. Uh, you may have to change a coefficient more than once. We didn't have to on these two, but it happens a lot. So don't get discouraged if you start out with one coefficient number and you end up you know, saying, well, that's not gonna work and you have to change it again. Uh, and last step, make sure that ratio of the coefficients is in the lowest ratio before you give me a final answer. Okay, all right, so I hope this helps. Uh, and look for the assignment that deals with more balancing today, and we'll, uh, we'll see where you land on this one and go from there. Okay, have a good day.